try to imagine it. What if it drops by 10%? Are you okay? For sure, the crypto market will drop more than 10%. And we've seen it. Some cryptos on a daily basis have even dropped more than 10%. It even happens in a few minutes or in a few hours that we've seen large pushdowns above 10%. So I'm just saying that if you can't tolerate 10%, then larger drops would be even massively harder. Hey guys, so I'm making this video also from the context of I have some friends who have been investing in the cryptocurrency market. Most of their investments are not crypto related. It's different when you're investing in the stock market because of course when you invest in stocks, it's not 24-7. When you invest in stocks, you can look at the businesses. There's a level of speculation but it's not as speculative as cryptocurrencies but there's still volatility. I've had a lot of friends that are investing in more conservative assets from pagibig MP2, bonds, real estate. They have businesses but the proceeds of their businesses, they're just leaving it as cash. They've seen cryptocurrencies also as something that's very interesting. They started to position but a lot of them started off with large amounts of money already given the current market conditions and a lot of them are asking about what are they supposed to do in times of volatility because please do notice that even if you buy Bitcoin, even if you buy Ethereum, which I believe are the best cryptos that we have, not just in terms of market cap, but Bitcoin as apex digital property, a store of value, digital gold, and Ethereum has one of the most useful pieces of digital technology that we ever have, they will still have volatility. Eh? I'm sure you remember Bitcoin hitting 6.4 and dropping to 28,000 in just a few weeks. I'm sure you remember seeing Ethereum go from 44,000 to 1,800 also in just a few weeks. If the largest, the biggest, and the best cryptos have dropped massively, how much more for the others that are trying to buy and take out the top one and top two cryptos as well. I'm not saying that the other cryptos are not good because I'm a big fan of BNB. I'm a big fan of the Binance Smart Chain. I'm also doing deep dives into Cardano right now. I love DEXs like PancakeSwap. I like what VET is actually doing. There's so many tokens that are highly connected to NFTs right now and gaming that are very very interesting as well. If the large cryptos have volatility, any other one below Bitcoin and Ethereum would have more volatility. It's so important that when you enter the crypto markets, you must realize what your volatility ratio would be, which is also predicated on the amount of money that you place in your investments. Because of course, if you put 1,000 pesos, you can lose 50%. Losing 500, either in paper or if you cut loss, is not as painful as putting in 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 50 million, and then you're doing it for the first time. One way for you to be able to know if the volatility is something that you can tolerate is to ask yourself, if you place a million pesos, if you place 500,000 pesos, and it drops by 10%, are you okay? Will you be able to sleep well at night? Is it something that you can tolerate? Because if it's not something that you can tolerate, the most prudent thing for you to do is to lessen your position, is to lessen your exposure. A lot of people want to put a higher amount of money because when it does well, they get to ride the upside very, very well. And they get to earn more, which is very, very true. And that's what we've been talking about. It's all about volume. It's all about putting an amount of money based on something that you have high conviction on and just ride it and just hold it. However, please do remember this, that there's also a point in time where you have to temper your conviction, your knowledge, your experience with also what you can take. Because at the end of the day, if it's not something that you can take, then it's not worth it. It's not worth losing a sleep at night if when you see your crypto drop, nahihirapan kayo. So my suggestion is, do a test. Whatever amount that you put, try to imagine it. What if it drops by 10%?
are you okay? For sure, the crypto market will drop more than 10%. And we've seen it. Some cryptos on a daily basis has even dropped more than 10%. It even happens in a few minutes or in a few hours that we've seen large pushdowns above 10%. So I'm just saying that if you can't tolerate 10%, then larger drops would be even massively harder. Or if you want to be even more aggressive, ask yourself also, what if it drops to 15? What if it drops to 20? But if you start at 10%, that's a very, very good starting point already for you to be able to see if it's something that will work for you or not. So you place 500,000, you place 100,000, you place a million, you place 5 million pesos, regardless of what amount that you're thinking. And then it's something that you can't tolerate. One thing that you could do is, for example, lower mo. You can't take a million per trade, then try it. 800,000, is it something that you can take? Or 500,000, you split it into two cryptos. Or kung yung overall portfolio mo talagang hindi mo kaya matolerate, that means that certain amount of money shouldn't be in the crypto markets. That's what I'm saying. It also should be an amount of money that when there's volatility, you can huddle. Huddling is also a result of your knowledge. Huddling is also a result of how much you know. But you also have to realize this, that part and parcel of protecting yourself is buying properly. Every time it goes up and then you buy it at a lower price, you'll ultimately make more. It will always be a function of knowing where to enter. And it's not wrong buying on breakouts because when you buy at breakouts, essentially you're buying it at a more expensive price. And you have to realize that when you're doing that, you need to know when to exit. Hindi pwedeng bahala na na, I will just sell when it when this date will particularly hit or I will just sell when this actually happens. It has to be concrete. Are you selling when it tries to pump, fails to break a resistance, and then you're actually selling? And a question you need to ask yourself is, are you selling everything? Are you selling half? What percentage of your portfolio are you actually selling? And that's just one iteration, two questions from one possible scenario that it fails to not break the next resistance. But what if you're looking at as your sell signal? Okay, I'm gonna sell when it goes above 50%. I'm gonna sell when it goes above 100%. What's your narrative? When you sell, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna leave everything into USDT? BUSD, USDC, they're just gonna remain into stable coins? Or are you readily gonna transfer them to another crypto that you want to take opportunity from? So please remember when you also do that, the risk is you binenta nyo. And this has happened to me so many times. I say this because this has happened so many times uh, in the past for me that my mistakes also is I took profits too early into something that if I held onto it, umakyat pa sana siya, and I would have been able to ride that even more. Then yung ginawa ko, I transferred it to another stock. And as I transferred it to another stock, that other stock did not perform well. Mas maganda pa na I held on to the one at hindi ko na nagbinenta. So please also remember that if you will transfer it, now you add another layer of risk for yourself or you add another pressure that if you did not sell, baka mas maganda pa yung naging performance kesa dun sa pinaglipatan nyo. Every time you transfer it to USDC, USDT, BUSD, it's already pegged to the dollar. It doesn't give you any growth. The crypto market can go up, but as it starts to go up, hindi ka na makikinabang doon. You won't be able to uh, take advantage of the opportunity as well. I'm not saying you don't sell, but I'm saying that studies have shown it that even if you huddle, and that's why I admire a lot of those long-term Bitcoin huddlers because huddling also requires discipline. When there's a lot of fear, when there's a lot of uncertainty, when there's a lot of doubt, but you have diamond hands to also see it through. Because at the end of the day, profitability also will be sticking to your guns even though you're so tempted also to sell. That's one very, very important parameter when you're investing. The ability also to log out or not to log in. That the only time you start to enter and log into your brokerage or to that exchange is that when you've realized that, okay, it's time for me to actually get out. Because I'll say this over and over, the more you monitor, the more tempted you will be to transact. And the money is not in how many times you monitor and it's not in how many times you transact, but the money in any investment is how well you know it what your strategy and your research is, and what are your parameters and what are your conditions to exit. Once those parameters have surfaced, then it's time to get out of that particular position. 
and that's where it becomes very very interesting so there how do you protect yourself against volatility only expose an amount of money that you are okay with and to me it doesn't matter if it if that's 10,000 pesos or 10 million pesos because we're all different eh? different folks different strokes what works for me won't work for you but you have to follow what works for you you have to follow what you've studied eh? and it has to be at a point where you're not just taking my word for it but you're, you've done your own due diligence and you know what you're supposed to do in the world of investing you're not supposed to rush things eh? the fastest way to earn is to do it slow the fastest way to be able to do it is to also love the process why because when you do it slow when you love the process and you build the experience necessary the amount that seems to be so scary right now will be something that you can tolerate an amount that seems to be something that you cannot take it when it drops after time after having an opportunity to be able to build experience skill and to be able to see it through the worst times what used to be so bad before what used to be so scary before might not be so scary anymore but it takes time to do that eh? and you don't have to rush it please don't rush to get better don't rush to be able to build that particular skill because if you're so scared about the markets pushing up and you'll be left out guess what there will be other opportunities. It's not a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Even when the market is bare, there will be opportunities for you to be able to stack. There will be opportunities for you to be able to trade. There will be opportunities for you to be able to ride markets when it goes up. So you don't have to follow what everyone's timeline is saying. If a lot of them would be selling at the end of the year and it's part of their plan, let them do it. If it's also part of your plan, then do it. But don't do it just because everyone else is doing it and i'll end it with this if you do what everyone else is doing you'll end up like everyone else do you build the conviction allocate accordingly and know that volatility is not a bad thing it's something that you can learn and build experience on to make you a better investor so i hope you guys got a lot from this and i hope you stayed until the end and i hope that this is something that's beneficial for all of you if you guys have questions put it in the comment section down below and i hope that this is something that added tremendous value to you this is marvin germo i hope this video helps you trade well trade strong trade smart see you all again soon and god bless you all